1977, Mattel Toys started an electronics division and released the world's first microprocessor-based handheld games. The same year, Atari released the Atari 2600 video game system. Mattel Electronics started development on its own video game system, Intellivision. Test marketed in 1979, it was officially introduced in 1980. Initially, Mattel stressed that Intellivision was intelligent television. Not a toy, but the cornerstone of a home computer system that would be as educational as it was entertaining. However, Mattel quickly discovered that driving the sales of Intellivision were its screen graphics, which were higher resolution than the Atari 2600. Mattel capitalized on this with a blitz of TV and print ads that featured side-by-side -side comparisons of the Atari and Intellivision systems. Sales of Intellivision skyrocketed. The video game wars had begun. During 1981, Mattel hired programmers as fast as possible to meet the demand for more games. This was a new industry, so enthusiasm and energy were more important than experience. Most of those hired were in their early 20s. For many, designing Intellivision games was their first job. A TV guide profile of the Intellivision programmers dubbed them the Blue Sky Rangers. So many people were arriving, there was no place to put them. Throughout Mattel's headquarters in Hawthorne, California, pockets of Intellivision programmers were crammed wherever some extra office space could be found. Early in 1982, the staff was moved into a warehouse down the block in the main Mattel building. They continued to work on Intellivision games while the warehouse was being remodeled into an office building around them. With Intellivision racking up phenomenal sales, Mattel attacked the market aggressively. A voice module was announced that would add synthesized speech to new games. M Network, translations of Intellivision games for play on the Atari 2600 was introduced. In 1982, the rate of hiring was increased. Soon there were well over 100 programmers, artists, managers, writers, and others on the second floor of the converted warehouse, all working on game software. The Willis Warehouse was open 24 hours a day. The pressure of deadlines was constant. Working late or all night was normal. Because of the odd hours, the programmers, mostly young and single, tended to socialize with each other. Working at Mattel, one artist remarked at the time, was like living in a college dorm. Life seemed to be half stress, half party. Half stress, half party is a good description of the video game industry in general. By summer 1982, the Atari and television war was in full swing. The Atari 2600 was in over 10 million homes, the Intellivision in a few Successful games sold a million plus copies. Other companies were now producing games for one or both systems. Soon, a glut of titles flooded the store shelves. Competition was growing increasingly cutthroat. Many of the games in this glut of titles were rushed to market and were of poor quality. Disappointed consumers turned their television sets from video games to the hot new thing, MTV. But Mattel stepped up development and hiring. In Television 2 was introduced. It would play existing in television cartridges and, with the optional system changer module, also play Atari 2600 cartridges. The Intellivision 3 was announced as the answer to the new higher resolution ColecoVision system. The Television 3 would play existing television cartridges at normal resolution, plus new higher resolution cartridges. M Network expanded into computer games for the IBM PC and Apple II. A new programming division was opened in Taiwan to handle the overflow from California. Another programming division was opened in the south of France to develop games for Intellivision's fast growing European market. The early keyboard component, which had only been released in test markets, was replaced by the Entertain Computer System. Mattel Electronics' new non-Intellivision computer system, the Aquarius, made its debut. This aggressive and expensive development took its toll. Mattel Electronics started posting massive losses. It was hoped that the spending would pay off once the new product hit the market. The June 1983 Consumer Electronics Show in Chicago was expected to be the turnaround. Mattel Electronics made a huge splash. Retailers and the press finally saw the hardware and software that Mattel had been promising for months. 
While the enthusiasm for Intellivision and its games was still strong, the reception for the new hardware, Intellivision 3, Aquarius, the entertainment computer system, was lukewarm. Too little, too late, coming from one analyst. Mattel Incorporated responded by replacing Electronics top management. A new team was brought in to stress software development over hardware. The new team discontinued the Intellivoice and Aquarius, cancelled the still unreleased Intellivision 3, and put future development of the entertainment computer system at the lowest priority. Over 500 workers were laid off in August. Game development continued, but so did the slide into debt. In October 1983, Mattel Electronics announced losses of over $280 million for the year. More layoffs quickly followed. Down to about 30 people, the software staff spent November and December polishing up their games and their resumes. The remaining programmers were laid off January 20th, 1984. They threw a wake for Intellivision. But Intellivision refused to die. The former marketing VP for Mattel Electronics bought the rights to the system and started INTV Corporation. INTV contracted with some of the original programmers to create new Intellivision games. Running a low overhead operation, INTV was able to supply Intellivision owners with new games throughout the rest of the 1980s. But in 1990, with the rise of new video game systems led by Nintendo, interest in Intellivision games faded. INTV was forced to close up shop. Blue Sky Rangers, however, lived on. The original programmers, many still working in the game industry, regularly got together for reunions parties. In June 1995, they started a website about how the Intellivision games were created. The response was overwhelming. Thousands of fans who grew up with Intellivision wrote in, wanting to play the games again. So Intellivision Productions Incorporated was formed to bring the original games to new platforms and to new generations. More than two decades after the original idea, Intellivision lives, lives, lives.